and trust. This is breaking news from News 8. And our Sunrise Smart Start beginning with breaking news on this Tuesday. An Amber Alert issued for a missing Rochester teenager. Police say 14-year-old James Fernandez Reyes was abducted on Myrtle Street yesterday around 4.30 in the afternoon and his life could be in danger. Carmela Boykin live from the Public Safety Building with the latest on the search for the missing teen. Carmela, good morning. Good morning, Mark. The search continues for 14-year-old James Fernandez, for, excuse me, for James Fernandez Re, um, Reyes. Police do believe he could be in danger at this time. Fernandez Reyes is 5 foot 3 inches with brown hair, brown eyes, and weighs about 120 pounds. On your screen is a picture of the teen. James was last seen wearing a black jacket, blue pants, and white Nike Air Force One sneakers. The suspect is an unknown black male. Investigators say the 14-year-old was possibly taken by four to five black males with masks. The vehicle has been identified as a gold SUV. The type is an unknown mid-sized SUV with white New York state license plates. The vehicle was last seen driving north on Myrtle Street in Rochester and police are led to believe that the teenager is in serious danger. Anyone with additional information is asked to call the Rochester Police Department or dial 911. In Rochester, Carmela Boykin, News 8. Mark. Carmela, thank you. Of course, every minute counts here. For another look at the picture of this missing teen, head to our website, rochesterfirst.com. Also breaking this morning, a man in his 30s has serious head injuries after being hit by a car last night. Officers responding in Rochester to North Clinton Avenue around 11. The victim was taken to the hospital in stable condition. Police said no charges will be issued to the driver as a result of the incident. Happening today, the two brothers charged in a fatal attack last week in Rochester are due to be arraigned. Ronald and Donald Brown, both 47, are facing murder charges for their alleged role in the death of 24-year-old Armani Allen. Allen was shot, stabbed, and beaten to death out front of the transit center last Thursday. The suspects were taken into custody Sunday night and early Monday near West Linden Avenue in East Rochester. Taking a look at the morning forecast and a brisk start to this Tuesday, James. Yeah, yeah, certainly. I've got uh, my winter jacket out with the big fluff uh, uh, that I like to uh, wear and uh, keep me warm. I'm sure you may need the same as we start off uh, this morning in the mid 30s. 34 in Brockport, uh, downtown Rochester at 36. Uh, just a little bit of a breeze makes it feel cooler. Not as bad as yesterday. We we're dealing with 15 mile per hour plus wind gusts. Just not the case uh, for today, so maybe a little bit more manageable, but certainly still on the cooler side. Satellite and radar, the numbers above 32. That means any snow that hits the ground will likely melt. Maybe some minor issue on 104 in Wayne County, but other than that, uh, just some wet roads uh, to deal with this morning. We'll have the uh, commute forecast at the end of the show. Mark. James, thank you. Speaking of the roads, another check of our sunrise traffic and good news here for your early commute. 390, 490, 590, the throughway as well. All up to speed at last check. News 8 is your local election headquarters. Absentee ballots have now been counted. The results could be enough to flip the Monroe County Legislature in favor of Democrats for the first time in some 30 years. In Henrietta's 13th District, Democrat Michael Udelson is leading after earning 352 absentee votes. Republican Matt Borkowski got 94 there. Udelson was trailing on Election Day. This race, though, not officially called. In Irondequoit's 16th District, Democrat Dave Long leading Republican Joe Carbone by some 40, 47 votes on election night. Long has gained another 216 absentee votes to Carbone's 90. In Gates's 26th District, Republican Orlando Rivera was ahead of Democrat Yversha Roman by 78 votes after election night. Roman, though, gaining 169 absentee votes to just 40 for Rivera. Monroe County Democrats releasing a statement last night saying in part, this is about voters choosing legislators who are willing and ready to work with County Executive Adam Bello to tackle the very pressing issues our community is facing. Now another tight race from election night, that for a Rondequoit Town Supervisor, Republican Rory Fitzpatrick leading Democrat Joe Morelli Jr. by about 400 votes. Results in these races are not official. Hand counting is set to take place later this week. For more on absentee counts from other local races, visit our election guide at rochesterfirst.com. 
New this morning, County Executive Bello and Mayor Warren announcing the dates for next year's Lilac Festival. As with this year, the event will take place over three consecutive weekends in May, beginning May 6th. The festival will feature live music, a parade, and the return of the Wine and Beer Expo. In national news this morning, jury deliberations beginning today in the Kyle Rittenhouse murder trial. Prosecutors and defense attorneys presented their closing arguments yesterday. The 18-year-old accused of killing two people and injuring a third during a shooting at a protest in Kenosha, Wisconsin last August. Jurors have heard from more than 30 witnesses over two weeks. The judge did dismiss the gun charge against Rittenhouse yesterday, saying the weapon he was carrying the night of the fatal shootings was not illegal. Well, police in Aurora, Colorado, investigating a shooting at a high school there that sent six teenagers to the hospital. The victims ranging in age from just 14 to 18. Investigators say they found shell casings from different caliber guns, and witnesses say there were multiple suspicious vehicles around the school at the time of the shooting. The victims are expected to recover. No suspects are in custody. Have a look at this. Rescue teams saving a man after his car ended up in the water. Officials in Harford County, Maryland say the man became trapped as the water rushed in. Nearby, the fire department wrapping up a promotional shoot for its dive boat team. And the firefighters noticed the car sinking. They smashed the window and were able to pull that man out. Officials say the driver had minor injuries but is going to be okay. All right, time now for a check of the GRE Morning Business Report on this Tuesday. AAA saying more than 50 million people will travel, hit the roads and the skies this Thanksgiving. That's up 13% from a year ago, bringing demand closer to pre-pandemic levels. 90% of people plan to drive to their destination. Experts say you should arrive at the airport early to avoid potential delays. Well, another airline is boosting incentives for flight attendants and other staff to work over the holidays. Southwest reportedly offering double pay for overtime shifts between Wednesday of this week and November 30th. Ground crew members can get triple pay for working Thanksgiving and Christmas. And Santa Claus is coming to town. More malls and department stores are returning to pre-pandemic holiday traditions. That includes in-person appearances from Kris Kringle. Macy's is bringing back the big guy at stores in San Fran, Chicago, and New York City, while still, still keeping each city's protocol for masking and social distancing in place. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, Santa's got his booster already. So. Uh, he, got, he got the booster. <laughs> uh, he got to bundle up as well. Yeah. Uh, because it gets cold out there this time of year. Yes, it does. Uh, the beard comes in handy. A <laughs> no, no little extra layer of protection. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There certainly is a chill uh, to start off this morning. A neat view over Lake Ontario right now, looking over uh, um, some heavy lake effect rain and snow over the lake. It's just working its way into uh, Wayne County this morning. So if you're there, you may have to deal with a few uh, rain and snow showers, but otherwise we're looking pretty good. Bus stop forecast, the sunrise is in just a couple of minutes. We're starting off in the 40, 30s. We'll finish in the 40s, so still on the cooler side, but have your sunglasses handy. I bet we'll see a little bit of sun this afternoon. Finish with the eight day forecast. Uh, no big snows in sight. We'll keep saying that until it shows up. Until it happens. Right. <laughs> That's it for us for now. Our next update in 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is up next. Have a great day. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.